Hi, my name is Tom Heffel, and this channel is all about helping students learn chemistry. In this video, we're going to be talking about the different types of orders in kinetics. We're going to talk about zero order kinetics, first order kinetics, and second order kinetics, and how their graphs look different from each other. So let's jump right into zero order kinetics. Now, if we have this chemical reaction, A going to B, and that's going to be the same for all three, their rate orders are going to be different. For zero order kinetics, the exponent's going to be a zero in the rate law. For first order kinetics, the exponent is going to be one for first order kinetics. And then for second order kinetics, the exponent is going to be a two. And that's going to change the way some of our graphs are going to look like. Okay? For zero order kinetics, it's kind of the easiest of the three. Okay? Uh, for zero order kinetics, the rate doesn't depend on the concentration because the concentration is going to the zero power. And anything to the zero power is just one. Okay, So really, the rate here is really just equal to whatever the rate constant is. And this chemical reaction will just react at a constant rate. So if I'm clapping my hands, it would sound something like this. It would just be really consistent, okay, regardless of the concentration um, that's going on with, the, with, with reactant A. So really, this just reacts at a constant rate, okay, so it's a straight line, and the rate of the reaction is equal to the slope of the line, which is going to equal negative K. Now, I want to talk about the rate constant K. The rate constant K is always a positive number. It's always, this, this number right here is always positive, okay? But the slope is negative because as time goes on, the concentration of A has to go down because it's reacting to form the product B. So that's why the slope is going to be the same magnitude as K, but in a negative direction because the A is being consumed and it's turning into B, okay? So... If we ever want to figure out the concentration at some given point in time, we would just look up that time, okay, and then figure out what the concentration would be on the graph. Or we could do it algebraically with the following equation, okay? It would be the concentration at time t minus the concentration at time equals zero, sometimes we call this the initial concentration, is simply equal to negative kT. Now, if you're taking AP chemistry, not college chemistry, but if you're taking AP chemistry, this equation is given to you on your AP equation sheet. Okay? If you're in a college class, this is an equation you definitely want to know. And we could rewrite this into slope-intercept form if we wanted to. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the initial concentration to the other side of the, of the equation. So this equation becomes the concentration at time t is equal to negative kt. And then since this is moved to the other side, instead of minus initial concentration, it's going to be added to the uh, right-hand side because we added to both sides of the equation. So this is really the y. Negative k is your slope. Okay, T is going to be X, and then your Y-intercept is the initial concentration or the concentration at time equals zero. So this equation is re can be rewritten in the slope-intercept form, and that shows us that we have this kind of like linear relationship. So whenever you kind of see this format, okay, it's kind of, it, it, it's kind of uh, I don't know what the mathematical term for the type of, the, of equation this is, but it can be rearranged so that it is into slope-intercept form, okay? So, uh, but this is the kind of thing that you're going to see in a college textbook or on an AP equation sheet, okay? Now, when it comes to first-order kinetics, you're not going to have this linear relationship between the concentration and time. In fact, it's going to be, it's going to have some curvature. It's going to look more like, it's going to look more like this, okay? And so when this reacts, it's not going to be that constant rate that we had before. It's going to be fast at first, and then it's going to slow down. So it's going to sound something like this. 
as far as the reaction rate, okay? Now, in chemistry, it's like to get all this stuff, okay, there's no linear relationship here, okay? This one was linear, and at the end of the day, we are trying to get to linear relationships. Now, in order to take this graph to another graph that is linear, some calculus has to be done. Now, thankfully, in first year, uh, first year college chemistry and in AP chemistry, you don't need to know any calculus, but there is some calculus behind the scenes. What's taking place is that this chemical reaction is going to go through some type of calculus integration. Okay, so some calculus is going to be done. And the calculus that's being done is an integration. And when that integration has been done, you get this new equation, okay, that is that looks something like this, which is the natural log of the concentration at time t minus the natural log of the initial concentration is equal to negative kt. And I'm going to box this in, okay, and make sure I label it, hey, this is kind of like on the AP equation sheet if you're taking that level of class. Now, if you look, it has the same format, okay? Here's AT, AT, A0, A0, negative KT, negative uh, KT. So it looks the same, okay? The only difference, instead of just having concentration, it's going to be the natural log of the concentration. So I'm going to put that on the y-axis, natural log of the concentration, instead of just concentration. And of course, this is going to be time on my x-axis. And then when I graph this out, I'm going to get that linear relationship that I'm looking for. And once again, the slope is going to be equal to negative k, okay, because it's right here. And I could do the same thing. I could move this to the other side and have it in slope-intercept form as well, okay? So, if I wanted to figure out the concentration at some point in time, I'm going to use this equation because I don't have an equation for this, okay? So basically, I'm going to look up the time, and then what I'm going to figure out is the natural log of the concentration, and then I can do some math to figure out the exact concentration at that moment in time. But it will include a little bit math where over here, you just looked it up and you knew the exact concentration. Over here, when you look it up, it's not concentration, it's natural log of the concentration. And so we call this a first order integrated rate law, okay? And it's only to be used if your rate order is one. If you use this equation when the rate order is zero, you're not going to get the right answer, okay? So this equation is only used when the rate order is one, okay? And this equation is only used when it's rate order of zero. And then, then it happens one more time, but for second order kinetics, okay? So same thing, if we graph the concentration versus time, it's gonna have this curvature that first order kinetics have, but it's just accentuated even more. So as far as the sound is concerned, it would sound something like this. And it would slow down as the time goes down, where this rate was constant, okay, this one slowed down, this one slowed down a little bit even faster, okay, all based on the concentration because it is going to be squared, okay. Now, because it's going to be squared here, we're going to go through some calculus integration, and when the calculus integration is done, you will get a linear relationship. So that's the whole idea of doing the calculus uh, integration is to give us a linear relationship, okay. And when I do the calculus integration for second order kinetics, I get this equation. It's going to be 1 over the concentration at time t minus 1 over the initial concentration. And it's going to be equal to positive kt, not, not negative kt like the other two. Okay, And you get this on your AP equation sheet. So I'm going to box it in. Okay, So since it's a positive kt, it's going to look something like this. But remember, the y-axis is no, it's no longer concentration. Because of the calculus integration, it's going to be 1 over the concentration. Just like this, after the calculus integration, it was natural log. 
of the concentration. So depending on the calculus integration that was done, which you don't have to know how to do, okay, but you do have to look at the equation and say, hey, now I got inverse or 1 over the concentration versus time. And once again, the slope is going to be that rate constant. So in each case, the slope is the rate constant. Just sometimes it's negative and sometimes it's positive. But K itself is always positive. It's just you can have K as a positive slope or you can have K as a negative slope. So the moral of the story here is, is to find your linear relationship depending on the data that you're looking at. And for a particular chemical reaction, okay, it can be either zero order kinetics and give you a linear relationship, or the linear relationship could be uh, linear with first order kinetics, or it could be linear with second order kinetics. And you have to analyze the graphs to determine which order you have, and then when you know which order you have, you know which of these three equations you should use. So let's take a look at some of the uh, examples that College Board for the AP uh, test has done. Okay, now I sh the best I can do is kind of like hold it up in front of the camera here, but when you analyze this, and I'm going to come to the other side to kind of work through it with you, so sorry about the, the angle here. Okay, but when you look here, okay, only one of these is going to be linear. This one has curvature, this one has curvature, and so I know it's not either of these. Now this one says natural log, so this is first order kinetics, but it's, it's not because it's not linear. This is inverse concentration. That's, if this ended up being linear, it would be second order kinetics, but it has curvature. So I know it's not second order. I know it's not first order. The only thing that's giving me a linear relationship is when it's just concentration over time, and that is zero order kinetics. So in that problem, okay, if you get a linear relationship with just concentration, okay, then I know it's zero order kinetics, and I'm using this equation only. Okay, I'm not going to use this equation, and I'm not going to use this equation because in that problem, it is zero order kinetics. Okay. Let's take a look at another AP test here, okay? So let me hold it out far enough here so that you can, well, we'll take a look at one graph at a time, okay? So this first graph says that it's concentration versus time, but it, if I connected these two points, okay, not everything would land on the same line. It looks like this has curvature, so it's not zero order kinetics, okay? The next graph, okay, is inverse concentration and it looks like if I had you know if I put my pen up here okay all those things would touch the line so it does look like I have a linear relationship here and inverse concentration versus time when you get a linear relationship that tells you that it's second order kinetics okay and then just for giggles here we'll take a look at this one this is the natural log one okay if this gave me a linear relationship it would be first order kinetics but if I connected the first point and the last point you can see that not everything would touch that line. This has a little bit of curvature. It's hard to see, but there's a little bit of curvature here. So we know that it's not first order kinetics, okay? And the only thing that's providing us a linear relationship is when it's inverse concentration versus time and that second order kinetics, okay? That would be the one all the way over here. It's inverse concentration versus time that was giving us a linear relationship. So in that second problem, I would only use this equation if I'm trying to figure out a concentration at a particular time, okay? Now, in all of these uh, equations, you have the amount at time t, the initial amount, the k, and the t, and pretty much these uh, problems are going to be, hey, given three of those variables, okay, figure out the missing one, okay? For example... I could give you the initial concentration K and T, and then you would have to figure out the amount at time T. And that would require some math, okay? And we'll do a couple videos in the future showing that math. But for this video, what we're trying to say is, hey, look at these graphs, find your linear relationship, just like we did in the two practice problems. And then when you find your linear relationship, like that last problem, it was linear here, then you know which equation of the three that you should be using.
Okay, so this video is all about analyzing graphs to figure out what type of equation you should use. And if you found this content helpful, give it a like and subscribe. And when you leave a comment, that really pushes this information out to other students that might be interested in learning chemistry.